it seems to me, and this is not just the issue, first of all, the, the entire no word climate change is obscurantist. I mean, it, if you go down and ask people in communities, generally speaking, what do they understand by climate change? Well, it's going to be a, a you know, well, whether it rains or not, whether it does this or not. But I think that the, and I think that's a lot, why a lot of the NGOs and others have talked about climate justice as opposed to climate change, because that makes it a political economy issue. And what I think is, is, is a problem, generally speaking, with a lot of our journalism and a lot of coverage is, is sectoralized. We like to be expertise. We like to have things separate and separate pages and separate things. And climate change is a systemic issue. Let me just take an example of, for example, basic services. Back in 2000, 2001, when the communities started really, really struggling here, media generally ignored the whole issue didn't want to hear about it. There was a bunch of disgruntled communities and ultra-leftists that were causing trouble. Um, and privatization was something sitting over there. Now, 10 years later, it's mainstreamed completely. It's now called, what? Service delivery. So we, have, we get a term for it, and then you write about it. But what I'm trying to say is all of these things are connected. We can't talk about anything to do with climate change without talking about the development paradigm, without talking about political leadership, without talking about where is it poor people and people that are going to get basic services, or is it a power station? Those are fundamental economic decisions that then affect a whole range of other things. And so if, it, if the systemic nature, the very crisis that we're in globally is a systemic crisis. The, the climate crisis is not uh, uh, separate from the financial crisis. It's not separate from the other, the military crisis. It's not. They're all interconnected. And there's this tendency to want to have very uh, sort of in, in, journalist, in journalistic terms, and I, I say this from experience because for 15 years, generally trying to write things that make those connections of the dots and generally being rejected most of the time. Precisely because it's like if you write in a very specific way on a very specific thing and it's really readable, well then fine. And it seems to me that the real challenge for journalism now, and particularly print media, which is becoming anachronistic, generally speaking, in a world of, of is to shift the entire uh, um, uh, way in which writing takes place and to actually t take people into their confidence and say that people aren't as stupid as they think they are about connecting these dots. That, that poor person in Guiani actually a understands very clearly that the decisions that are made at the local council level and, at about, and at the, by the energy department and the mines fundamentally affect the water, fundamentally affect the agriculture, affect the then climate, and a whole range of other things. And making those kinds of connections would then be able to speak to a range of different things as opposed to it becoming something that, as Salim said, we talk amongst ourselves. The experts talk amongst themselves. They use all the acronyms. They use all the strong words. And nobody else understands what the hell is being said. No, this is, it's a good debate because this, this debate prefaces the serious divides in South African society. And I don't think we need to be sugarcoat this um, in any way. Because the notion that, and this is something that I think is the flavor of the year, which is that somehow the world is, is changing and we're all getting more collective understandings of everything. If we look at our own country, it's going in the opposite direction. It's going into the me generation. It's going into it's, it's what I can get, at, how much I can get, how soon can I get it, and everything. I think we need to be realistic. But I just wanted to respond. I, I think the, the comrade from Avislali is, is, is absolutely correct. Let me take an example of the earthquake. When the earthquake hits Port-au-Prince of the same magnitude that it hits Tokyo, the reason why one million people die in Port-au-Prince is because they're poor. The reason why 5,000 people die in Tokyo is because it's a fairly wealthy country and they had proper buildings and proper procedures and everything else. So it's exactly the same kind of thing, but of course it affects the poor more. Everything does because it's, it's a fundamental differentiation and that gets us to the issues which I, I, I think we, we, we need to be real here. Power, democracy, ownership, wealth, opportunity. These are the fundamental issues in our own country and in the world. They are inherently ideological. Inherently. If you're trying to tell me that the decisions that are taken at the macroeconomic level in this country to spend one trillion rand on uh, 
energy generation, predominantly fossil fuel, is not an ideological decision, then I think we're, we live in different worlds. It's fundamentally about accumulation, about wealth, about opportunity. And so it's not about communism versus capitalism. It's about how it is that we can live together in that context. And that's where, in this discourse between so-called so civil society and, and, and uh, the press and government, because I, I, the, the point that was being made by Mohammed is absolutely correct. The reason why government responds now more, and by the way, to a lot of these movements, is because they're their own constituency. They're afraid. Their own constituency is going to turn on them. Where is the media's constituency? Who is Business Day's constituency? Business Day's constituency is predominantly business. Uh, Star's constituency and, and Cape Town's constituency are predominantly middle class readers and upper middle class readers. So that we can't sugarcoat this. We respond to the needs of our constituencies. So if the media in that context wants to be able to speak outside of the constituencies that they're actually mostly responding to, and you said how the, the poor, it's about conscientization. It's about a different way of thinking. It's about saying that climate change and all these other kinds of issues is not simply about how it affects. It's about if we do not begin to bring, bridge the barriers between rich and poor, between neighborhoods, getting out of the enclaves, that we're actually all going to be sinking fairly soon. I think that's the message in the context of breaking this. And government is part of that as well, because they're the entire constituency. So I think we, in this debate, we need to get real, because there's very real issues. And it's not about, we're not in a de-ideologized world. In fact, if anything, we're moving into a more ideologized world. It's just a different kinds of ideologies.